Hey guys, check here with another KSP video, and once again I'm going to be taking a look at the KOS Scriptable Autopilot System mod and using it to control lights in a very interesting way. So first I'm going to show you this average looking rocket, uh, except for this light display that I have attached on a launch clamp. And you can see you can light the uh, individual segments, and each segment is bound to an action group. And using KOS, we can actually control these action groups. Um, so here I have the KOS module. And I'm going to show you uh, quickly a script that I wrote. And it's a countdown script. So you can set an arbitrary number that you want to count down from, from 0 to 99. And the script will go ahead and count down from that and light the appropriate display segments to display the required digits. So here we go. We'll just go ahead and run that. Okay, here we go. So we see it started at 99. Now it's counting down. So the way this works is that each segment is bound to an action group. So there are seven segments on each digit. So there are 14 segments in total that we need to control. Now, if you're familiar with action groups, you know that there are only 10 main action groups uh, that we can control, uh, action groups 1 through 10. But we also have special action groups, including gear, RCS, uh, abort, SAS, and a couple of others, I think. And so what I have is those uh, extra four um, segments that we need to control are bound to some of these special action groups. So if you look closely you'll see RCS flashing and, or brakes flashing or gear flashing. So I'm just going to go ahead and edit the script uh, to start counting down from a lower number. And uh, we can set it to 25. So the downside with using uh, action groups that aren't main action groups to control the light segments, such as gear or brakes, is that if your rocket uses any of those things, they're going to be triggered uh, when the appropriate light segments need to be displayed. So the way to get around that is to use only one digit, which would require only uh, seven segments to be displayed and that way you free up the uh, special action groups. So the rocket's going to light its engine at 5 seconds and it's going to release the launch clamp at 0 seconds and then just take off as normal. Besides cool countdown timers, we might be able to use action group controlled lights to do something useful. So here we have a plane, but on the back of it I have this weird light fixture. And what I have here is five lights. Each one is bound to its own action group. And what we're going to do is we're going to use these lights as an ILS, or instrument landing system. And what ILS does, it allows pilots to make precision uh, landings onto runways in poor visibility. Uh, so each light uh, represents a direction that the plane should be going um, in order for it to be on the correct glide slope to the runway. So what I'm first doing here is I'm just uh, taking off and flying out towards the hills. And from there, um, I'm just flying this manually, but from there I'm going to run a script that I wrote. And what it's first going to do is direct the plane to a VOR radio beacon. Um, this radio beacon is just something fictitious. I just picked uh, geo coordinates for it that would put it uh, about 20 kilometers uh, away from the airport. So 
when the script is run, it's going to tell our aircraft uh, which direction it needs to turn in order to intercept this fictional radio beacon. Now I could have theoretically used an actual physical target um, as the VOR, but just to get it for to a precise location that I wanted. Uh, for now I'm just using just lat long position. So I'm just going to go ahead and run the script now. And what it's doing is uh, it shows us a message from the Kerbal Space Center's air traffic controller, which is telling us to fly a heading of uh, 125 degrees at 2,500 meters uh, to intercept the VOR radio beacon. Uh, what VOR is, it's a VHF omnidirectional radio, and it just helps the uh, aircraft localize their position. Uh, so again, this is just a point on the surface of Kerbin that I chose kind of arbitrarily. Um, it's not actually a physical thing there. So below the air traffic control message, we have our distance to the VOR and uh, the bearing to it. Now, once we get to within uh, two and a half kilometers, we'll switch to the ILS uh, approach system and the lights will automatically activate and I'll fly the plane by looking at the lights. Uh, the lights will help guide me to the runway at the correct uh, slope. So here we go. The ILS is now activated and so it's telling me that I need to turn left. So what the vertical lights are is they tell me if I'm above a glide slope or below the glide slope. If the top light is on, it means I need to uh, be higher, and if the bottom light is illuminated, it means I need to be lower. Um, the left and right are telling me that I need to turn left or right, and when the center light is illuminated, it means I am centered uh, horizontally. So the goal is to only have the center light illuminated. So I'm just flying, uh, adjusting my pitch and yaw so that I only get the uh, center light illuminated. So I have the glide slope set to 8 degrees, which is much steeper than uh, normal commercial aircraft would land at. Uh, they usually land at about 3 degrees. Uh, I think the space shuttle comes in something ridiculous like 10 or 15 degrees but uh, for Kerbal uh, you can push the limits a bit so uh, I found 8 degrees is pretty good so what's going on is the um, script is looking at my bearing to a target on the runway as well as a bearing to the end of the threshold on the opposite end of the runway and it's uh, trying to keep those angles at a minimum and it's also looking at my angle uh, above the ground to the target on the runway. And so I'm trying to follow that glide slope of 8 degrees, plus or minus 1 degree. And I'm trying to minimize my bearing uh, to the target on the runway uh, horizontally, plus or minus, I think I have a quarter of a degree. So when I'm about a hundred meters uh, from the target, the ILS uh, lights will disengage so that I'm not focused intently on the lights. Uh, I should just be focused on where I am on the runway. Uh, I found that if I just kept the lights on, I would just be staring at them constantly and, and I would end up crashing into the runway. So there we go. That's a pretty smooth landing. It probably takes a lot longer than just uh, flying it by eye, but uh, it's a good example of how we can use lights bound to action groups to do something useful. So that's it for this video. Uh, you can subscribe to the channel if you like or check out some of my other KSP videos. So thanks for watching.